Yo, what's up? I'm gonna be selfish this whole week. It's gonna be nothing but JC story time. It is what it is, man. Like I said, I have to share some of my stories sometimes so you get a little glimpse of pretty much what I've been through and what pretty much created Wrong Strong. Let's get into this video. Drugs, money, mansions, and private jets. A myth is being created around the narco culture. Narco culture has gone mainstream and can be seen in various areas like music, religion, soap operas, fashion, and language. But it's not all the pretty roses people like to see. Join me as I tell you the truth behind cartel life. This is narco culture. Yo, what's up? My name's JC. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment. If you're part of my crew, mi raza, mi familia, you guys already know who's got the keys to the Suburban. Suanta la Suburban. Let's take a ride. Hey, what's up, man? My name's JC and I am Ron Strong. You know, and um, sharing part of my stories is, is a big thing of this channel and, and pretty much my brand, Ron Strong, because I am Ron Strong and pretty much what I went through. When I was in prison in Mexico, you know, I, I was living really, really good when I first got there. You know, I bought my cell, I had carpet put in my cell, I had it painted, I had my big screen TV walking around with my Nike suits, with my jewelry, you know, and, and pretty much like living it up. I was eating at the restaurants. I would never go get food. And, you know, they fed you three times over there, but the food was really, really bad. Like in the morning, it was just like watered down oatmeal with a sweet bread, a bolillo, or, or you know, a campechana. And for dinner, it was usually rice, beans, tortillas, and whatever slop they had. Dinner time, again, it was the bread and the uh, oatmeal. So food wasn't good, but there was a lot of restaurants in there, stores that, you know, yeah, stores like grocery stores in a cell. Yeah, so, you know, they would have everything. Soda, chips, you know, popsicles. I mean, you name it, they had everything. Mayonnaise, bread, everything. And you could buy anything you wanted. And that's how I was living. But I made the mistake of actually I let this individual live in my, not live in my cell, but he would come and hang out in my cell. And I still remember his name till today, Arki. And people were really mean to him. So I, I would let him come to my cell and he was, he was smoking crack. At the time I knew what it was. I had sold it and everything, but I had never, never tried it, never done it, nothing, you know? And I'd be watching my TV, you know, watching movies, TV Azteca. <laughs> and smoking my weed and just, you know, I'd be in and out the cell and he'd be in there cooking with his little spoon, his water and his little pipe. And, and uh, sometimes he would use a can and, you know, put ashes on it. And I guess he would call those bazooka, bazooka hits. <laughs> and I just never thought nothing of it, you know? And one day I decided to take a hit, I guess out of nowhere, I was just like, let me see what this, what this really does or, or what? Why do people like, are so like hard up on it or why do they get hooked so bad or, you know what I mean? So I thought I was strong enough to actually take it, man. And I took that first hit off that can and I'll never, I'll pretty, pretty much never forget how it felt. Like uh, the ringing in my ears and just, it hit my brain right as the smoke was coming into my mouth. Like I was immediately high. And from that day on, I, I started chasing that high, like bad, bad, bad. And, you know, my friend Ricardo, you know, he had been there with me the whole time. He ended up leaving that year and got transferred to the Islas Marias. And I was left pretty much to fend myself and for myself and, and me, there's no one gear, second gear, it's either one gear, it's one or 20. Like there's, I'm all in or I'm all out pretty much. And I just went all out to the point where, you know, I sold everything, my carpet, my bed, my TV, my, my Nike shoes, my jewelry, everything. I had two pair of shirts, uh, one, one pair of jeans, 
in these really big ass boots. They were like a size 12, they didn't even fit me. I actually just found them in the garbage. And I can't explain like the feeling of how I felt. I felt like ashamed. I felt like everybody would make fun of me, you know, because over there they would call me Pollito. And everybody would make fun of me because like now I went from being, you know, my Seron, that's what they call them over there, my Seron is from living with the big, big, you know, drug dealers to being, you know, an addict. And I was cleaning cells for five pesos, I was doing laundry for 20, and you know, people left and right, like people were really, really mean, and it made it even more depressing and more, I felt more guilty, so I kept doing it more and more and more and more. I ended up getting into a fight that year with the wrong person, and they ended up sending me to a unit where it was like the poorest unit in that whole prison, where all the local, like gang members lived. They were all there for like murders, and, and you know, they would get high on, on different stuff because they were poor. So they would get high like on, on gasoline, tinder, glue, uh, all the stuff that a lot of the other people in the other jail that didn't do. And these were a lot of guys that were pretty much like out of it, man. They didn't have all their screws in their head. They were they were just messed up from, from those drugs. And you know, I honestly thought that when they moved me over there, like my, my life was over pretty much because a lot of them didn't like me to start off because I was an American. You know, second, I had got into a lot of beef with a lot of them because I, everybody just thought that they were better than them, you know, and they treated them a certain way. And I had got into a lot of beef with them. And it was crazy because I moved over there. And at first, you know, nobody really talked to me. Nobody really even messed with me or nothing. So I, I was like that the, the kid with the leopard, you know what I mean? Nobody wanted nothing to do with me. So I got even more depressed and more, the guilt just started to consume me and I started getting more and more high, man. It, it was, it was crazy. And I ran up my bill so high that people got very, very upset. You know, I didn't have the money to pay. They thought that I was still getting the money sent to me and I, I wasn't. I owed close to uh, $4,800 and I'll never forget this, man, because little by little at the end, all those people, all those poor people, you know, started taking care of me, you know, started bringing me food, because they were local, so they, they got food sent to them every day. Their mothers would bring baskets and they would come in, you know, with, with the canasteros and they would have, you know, quesadillas, San Luis Potosí style and all, and all that stuff. So they would get food sent all the time. One even hooked me up with his like sister so I could have like visits on Thursdays and Sundays, you know, and they started taking care of me, man. They started looking out and it was crazy because the people that once hated me, you know, started to love me. And I'll never forget the day. I wouldn't even go out of the unit because I knew that those people wanted to kill me. And, you know, we're talking about heavy, heavy, you know, cartel members that are very upset that I, I, I owed this money. Uh, so out of sight, out of mind, right? I didn't go out. One day, I don't know what was going on. I, I was hungry and I just said, fuck it. You know, I'm gonna go get me a thing of beans and some tortillas and I'm gonna eat. Well, I went out. They seen me and I guess it sparked up the heat that they wanted to get me. So they, they all got together and they came over with pipes, you know, bats and and stuff and came to get me and they went to, I was living in unit two, all these guys were from unit seven and eight. They started coming to the front of the unit and all the locals right there from San Luis Potosí came out and pretty much told them that they weren't gonna touch me, that if they wanted to touch me, they were gonna have to go to them first. And that's where I realized, man, that like, I started to see things a little bit different on how to treat people and, and just, you know, don't, don't judge a book by its cover or, or a person because they don't have money or because they come from a different area or they grew up different. And those are the changes that started to affect me later on in my life that made me want to change and, and want to actually, you know, scrub some ice off my heart and actually start 
wanting to do better things with my life and, and actually treat better people better. You know, and, and it took time. It took time. You can't change overnight sometimes, you know, and sometimes you do. There's a lot of things that I changed overnight that it's been a spiritual like war with me, like, you know, dealing with my demons and, and actually getting on my knees and humbling myself and just recognizing who I'm not, but who, who I want to be and working on every day to get there, you know, and you can't, you can't forget that being humble and actually recognizing who, who you're not is the biggest step, man, you know, and, and I'll never forget that day. I'll never forget that day because they protected me until the day the American Consul came. You know, and when the American Consul came and got me, I was like 120 pounds. My waist was 29. I was pretty much disappearing. And, you know, I was getting high with a lot of like tinder and inhalants and they they were messing me up pretty bad. I, I strongly believe that if I would have never got transferred, I would have probably died in that jail. And I know, I know that I have a purpose I know that there's something in store for me. You know, this is one of my biggest things is sharing my videos, my story, and just, you know, motivating those that have walked the life like I have and just, you know, tell you that it's okay, man. You know, as long as you wake up every day, there's a chance to change something about you. You know, my name is JC. I am Ron Strong. Don't judge nobody, stay in your lane, live savage, and remember, you only have one life to live, but if you live it right, hey, this could be a good life. All right, guys, I'll check you out.